Hey guys, welcome back. Mr. Zern here, looking at another App Inventor assignment. So today we are going to be creating a Mad Libs program. So very similar to what you did with your Blockly assignment. In fact, if you want to use the kind of the same Mad Lib there in App Inventor, uh, you could totally do that. So just kind of looking at what we've got going on here. So your program is going to ask five questions, all right? Could be the same five questions used for your Blockly assignment. You need to store each answer as a variable. Could be a global variable, could be a local variable, either one would work. Next, you need to return the answers in the form of a, re of a Mad Lib, all right? And as always, I am looking for a user-friendly layout, professional look, um, especially I want extra spaces, you know, in your text string so that words aren't smashed and jammed together. So just kind of taking a look here to kind of recap with my Blackley assignment. You can see here, I, am, I say, hey, you know, answer each prompt. And it just goes through and asks a question and it stores each one of those as a variable, right? And then it prints then finally with concatenation here with a bunch of text strings and the variables we can see, you know, on this date, space, this person was sick with the, this body part, flu, drink more, uh, whatever the random variable fluid is, and take this object as needed, okay? So in App Inventor, so here I am in App Inventor, and uh, if, you know, you want to create a new assignment. If you haven't already, give it a name, Mad Lib, maybe like you know, version one underscore one, because we can't use points. And we're gonna need a couple things. So one, gonna need a label. So grab your label, drag it over there. You're going to probably there's a couple ways you could do it. Um, we'll get into fancier ways using lists and tables and stuff later. But probably the easiest way to do it would be to grab five text boxes, and you can see I've got a bunch there right now. Now they're, they're blank, but each text box will allow for a person to enter the answer to one of their questions. And then, of course, we're going to need a button. And you can see I've got that at the bottom. But you could put that wherever, probably. Uh, again, I try and put it in a place that's going to make sense. People read top to bottom, you know, left to right. So ideally, they've kind of read through all the questions, and then they're going to click that. All right, so we also want to label our components there. So you can see I've got my answer label. We've I've got my text boxes. So I've got a name text box, a body text box, a day text box, a fluid text box and object text box. Now, why those names? Well, for example, when I click on fluid and we look at the hint and it says, what is your favorite thing to drink? So that'll prompt me when I start to do the coding end of this as to what's going uh, on. Uh, name. So what's that? What is your name? So again, like, so, okay, this, this text box is, you know, asking for the person's name. So I've named these in such a way that's going to, you know, prompt me as to what they are. Button one, probably not a, um, uh, you know, a great name for a button there. So how about... Um, finish button. I don't know, something there, finish button. Okay. So we've got, we've got all those set up there. So next uh, I'm ready to actually do the coding because I could, you know, join this and, and, you know, go in and click this AI companion to give me the QR code and I could put it on my tablet, but it's not going to be able to do anything. I mean, I can click that button, but nothing's going to happen because there's really no coding going on. So I'm going to click on the blocks button and I've already got it a little bit set up just so we have something to see. So Basically, if you kind of just, you know, explain this to yourself or sort of just talk your way through, you can kind of make sense. All right, so people are going to put stuff in those text boxes by, you know, answering whatever the question is, and then they're going to press the button, and then it's going to show the response. So, you know, when I press the finish button, do this thing. Okay, so we're going to need some variables here. And so you could do one of two things. You could do a global variable. Now, in that case, we need to initialize a variable to something, and it could just stay blank. And so that just by default, that one's name blank. I'm going to need another one. And so I could initialize a second variable. Name two is, is horrible. So I've got like a name, and then I've got a part of the body. So I could do like body. And sometimes I'll, I'll do this. So I kind of know what I'm referring to. So my name variable. Um, and so there's got to be, you know, and I could just leave them blank. So that's, that's one approach. You could take that approach. Uh, another approach is using a local variable. So we could kind of, you know, stick the local variable in here and say, hey, uh, when the, you know, 
basically when I click the button, initialize the name variable. Now keep in mind that this is a global variable and this is a local variable and they're separate. So they're not in A, they've got different names, but they're definitely not talking to each other. And what do I want to initialize that to? Well, I want to take that text box, the name text box, and I'm, I know that it says background color. I'm going to change it to text. I usually just, just do that. It's faster than trying to find it. And so when I click the button, it's going to initialize the name variable to whatever I put in the text box. And so you would kind of continue that. If you wanted to use local variables, you would just, you know, keep that process. So the next one is body, right? So I would say like body or body variable. And what am I initializing that to? Well, I'm going to initialize that to this uh, body. And I could grab, I'll just grab this first one. And again, not to the background color, but to the text that it says. So again, we can change, change those pieces. And that process would just continue for each uh, variable there. All right. So that would be kind of be one approach. If you were, I'll just pull this out for now. If you were using the global variable approach, we would say, all right, so set uh, name to, well, what am I sending the name to? Okay, I'm going to grab this piece here and text. All right, so when I click the button, it's going to, you know, initialize the name variable to the name text box. And then kind of the same thing, um, I could say set the body variable to what? Well, to the body. And again, I'm going to change it to text there and just kind of continue that process. So you could do it a couple of different ways. I mean, you could do just sort of the local variables with the, you kind of have to nest one each inside of the other, I think for that to work uh, correctly, or you could do the global variable. We always have to initialize that global variable first. I'm just going to kind of disable those blocks for now. All right. So we'd have to do that for all five of those. Let's just kind of pretend we've done that. So next is getting to kind of print that response, right? So we need something that kind of looks like that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we've got this label and that's where the answer is going to print. So uh, I'm going to pull out this set label and again, again, it says background color. And it's probably, yeah, it's fighting me because it says background color. Let me change it to text. Now it, it'll probably let me go in there. There we go. And so set the answered label text to what? Well, um, because I'm going to be stringing together multiple P elements, that's concatenation. So I'm going to go in here and grab this join block, but the fancy word is concatenation. And on the gear, I'm going to have to add a bunch. I'm going to have to add at least five just to get all five of those variables in there, right? So we've got to add at least five of those. Come on, get in there. And I'm probably going to have to add a couple extra as well just for the normal text strings. But this kind of gets me started. So, um, for example, I mean, you know, if I look here, I said, hey, on. OK, so let's grab text. And I could write on and I'm going to add the space. Now, I don't have the, uh, the, 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 the word there, but we could, you know, kind of just, just pretend here. So get. name and I could start it differently I could say John there we go let's do that so space on you know and then I maybe would have the day of the week right there on like Thursday space got uh, what did he get well let's grab another and we're gonna say body and then what well, I could get another one I could just copy paste this and say so like on whatever day of the week there you know or I'm sorry John on you know Thursday got you know whatever space flew all right so you can kind of see how that mad lib would start to take effect so a person on the designer side would be answering each of those questions I've got it there in the hint uh, part so they don't have to actually delete that text and then when they're done they would click this and in order for anything to really happen on the block side um, I've got here so I've got like hey when the button you know when you click the button do this and so in this case we've got the uh, these variables uh, the other approach could be let me sort of pull break those apart and enable those and I could kind of do something like that and that's 
let me move these global variables out of the way. There you go. And you could do it with the a local variable, kind of very similarly, but it's nested as opposed to, to stacked. Either way would, would work there. All right, so again, when you're done, you're going to want to show that to me. If you were in class, just bring the tablet up so I can try it. That's really quick. I can give you some immediate feedback. Uh, if you're at home and you need to show it to me, you would go to that export, download that, file and then you can upload it to me in Schoology. All right. So that should be just enough there uh, to make it dangerous there for that Madlib program. It just, you know, kind of builds on what we did previously with the, uh, you know, saying hello to your name there. All right. I will talk to you guys later. Can't wait to see what you're submitting. Bye.